So hi everybody, we are going to um, continue our story of the Greeks, yeah, the beautiful Greeks. But in order to understand the Greeks further, we have to talk about the Persians. There is no way around it. Had there not been a Persia, perhaps, there would not have been the Greece that we know as the you know, as the, uh, as the stimuli for the, for the uh, quote-unquote Western civilization, right? So now, um, okay, let's talk about the Persian Empire. Now, you remember your uh, Indo-European migrations and everything, circa, six, uh, circa 4000 BCE, and they come to Caucasus, and they go to Greece, and they go to Anatolia, and they... And, and a section of them moves north of the Black Sea, right, to the east, right, and comes to what we know as Central Asia, to the east of Caspian Sea, right? And from there they enter, a group of them enter the Iranian plateau, and a group of them enter India, right? Um, that's why, in, incidentally, we have talked about it, right? Indo-European, because it connects the languages of India, right, and, and South Africa. Uh, Southwest Asia um, to the European languages, right? So sometime between, it says here uh, 1000 BCE, but, but sometimes, sometime between 1500 to, you know, as I told you, 1000 BCE, right? The Iranians, if this is your Iran, my friends, Right? Uh, no, let me, okay, okay. Um, if it's, this is our Iran, say, yeah, my friend, and this is the Persian Gulf, and this is the Caspian Sea, right? Um, Caspian, Caspian Sea, right, right here. So they come, Indo-Europeans, they come and they enter the Iranian plateau from the northeast of it, right, uh, and come and settle in northwestern, uh, southwestern Iran, right, in southwestern Iran. Right? These are the communities that we know as Parsa. But a group of them, right, had have also come and they have settled in Media, right? Uh, which is to the north of Parsa, actually. So anyway, so um, I want you to pay attention to one thing, right, my friends? When we were still um, in the... Um, we, we are still dealing with Greece's archaic period, right? Um, and, and which, which goes to 480 CE, right? It is in here, right? Circa 550s, right? In, in the middle of the, of Greece's archaic period that the wars with the Persians start. Now, in order to get to that, yeah, uh, I want you to um, to um, bear with me, yeah? Okay, so here is the, uh, you know, the Iranian homelands, right? I would put it more here so you can you can think that by 1500 BCE, right, the Iranians have gathered here by 2000 BCE, actually. Um, okay. Uh, okay. By, certainly by 2000 BCE, Iranians are found here, right? 
Indo-Iranians separate around 1500, each going their own way, right? And, and one part comes and settles in, in Parsa, well, I mean, the Parsa come and settle in the southwest, and they give their name mm, uh, to the region of Persis, and this is the Greek name for it, right? In fact, everything that we know, most of the things that we know about uh, about the Achaemenid Persians, right, we know from foreign sources. Now, so they, they, they enter the land, right, and, and they call themselves heir, right, they are the noble ones who have entered Iran, right, and therefore Iran, right, become the land, becomes the land of Aryans, right, it is Arya, I, I, you know, air, Arya, Arya, Air, Iran, Ireland, <laughs> right? Uh, well, um, yeah, it 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 is. Uh, well, certainly Arya and Iran are coming from the same root, right, my friends, and uh, and uh, and um, so that Iran the the name of the country, right, would mean the land of Aryans, right? So now you have, you have ammunition <laughs> in your, um, in your mind, right? Uh, and then you will not call Iran, Iran, right? Iran. What, what, what from, right, I call what from <laughs> did you run <laughs> right so do no running right it's iran yeah okay so it, it is a, it is a very important piece of land in western asia right and it's a, it's an extremely although they're late comers they are an extremely extremely important they make extremely important contribution contributions to western asia and through it to the Greek, Greek and specifically the Roman world as well, as we will see later on, right? So, um, so this is the uh, Iranian population that is coming, uh, coming into Iran, right? Now, one of the things that I want you to keep in mind, my friends, is that, you know, non-Iranian, civilizations right were already living in this in in on the plateau before the coming of Iranians say circa 1200 right 1000 BC into the plateau right between 15 to 1000 into the plateau there were people living in in the plateau and in fact they we are we now know enough to recognize that the that the region of Elam right which was here and we know we know it since Sumerian times was one of these civilizations right which was not a Mesopotamian civilization it was not an Iranian civilization but it was a major civilization of its own with its capital city, uh, capital city here being Susa, one of the most uh, ancient cities of the world, a circular city, right? And we will talk about why Iranians built so much ci circular cities. They like the idea of the circular city, right? Um, so um, in the, 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 the capital of Susa, right, was a city, was a major city, the history of Proto, a uh, proto Susiana, so to speak, goes back to four thousand BCE, right? And there, are, there is yet another, uh, another sort of um, cultural, uh, sort of 
corpus that have they have excavations that they have done in southeastern Iran, at, where they have found a complete burnt city, right? And of course, if you burn a city, things remain more intact. In you know, um, yeah, uh, some of the some of them, right? some of the portions of it. Um, so they have they have discovered this this brilliant civilization also here that goes back to three uh, thirty three hundred BCE, right? That developed independent of the Sumerian civilization but which was connected to the Sumerian civilization. So, my friends, um, our knowledge, yeah, the repertoire of our knowledge is also growing, right, um, as we go on, right? So, uh, so, okay, so this is how the Iranians come, but on the plateau, right, we have the traditions, cultural traditions that sophisticated cultural traditions that go back to 3300 BCE, and I have not even talked about that with you, just I have, as I have not talked about the Mohenjo-Daro um, civilization, the Indic civilization for you yet. Yeah, and you will read it in your, in your um, le um, text, my friends, right? So, okay, so ancient Iran, right, means the land of Ir um, Aryans, and if you look at the uh, the map of Western Asia, you see that this piece of land, right, that this piece of land is actually the one that that connects most of Asia, the rest of Asia, right, um, to the Mediterranean world, right, um, and with the Achaemenid, which, which we will see um, even even going further. So so you're talking about a land that is a, a, a connecting uh, land, right, in the chains of cultures, right, that we have been studying um, dot, thus far, right? Um, so... So, um, but uh, in the 6th century, yeah, the same population, especially the Persians, right, started, uh, they created, right, they created the largest empire that the world had seen hitherto, right? Remember, you know, we, we started with the Akkadians, you know, joining some Sumerian city-states together and going through um, to towards Eastern Mediterranean, right? We saw after the Akkadians, yeah, uh, we saw that the Amorites came, the same thing. After, after them, we saw that the Assyrians came, right? And they created the biggest sort of empire yeah so the, so the world is going towards greater and greater um polit political structures yeah um and 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 more sophisticated more elaborate um sort of empires right with the coming of the persians right but the persians one of the things about the persians one of the important uh, issues about the Persians is that they were they created they were an oral culture and we know of their history by their oral traditions but besides these oral traditions right the history of the the the, the period that we are talking about right from Iron Age onwards, <coughs> excuse me, the first, the first millennium BCE, <coughs> the Persians did not create much writing. They they did not leave much writing for for us, right? So, but you remember, right? The Greeks were busy writing, right? Finally, you know, they had an alphabet. And, um, you know, 
they have they had created finally in this evolution of alphabet and um, a simplified alphabet right there was more literacy the majority of the population of course remained illiterate but literate literate about their cultural traditions through their oral histories right so therefore when you're talking about written cultures versus oral cultures my friends you know we usually give the the pride of place to the written um histories not to the oral histories and in fact we we count our history from the time that we began to write right 3000 bce right um okay let, so in the literate societies that we have had ha, we have discussed thus far right not everybody was literate right of course yeah so um but everybody was 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 literate about their cultural traditions of course right through word of mouth right passing a generation from generations to generations their histories right that's how we started our historical reconstructions to begin with remember okay so we uh, what who who wrote the history of the iranians for us therefore the hostile their enemies the hostile greeks right so what we know for for the iranian basically are through the foreign sources right um but so the the greeks know what happens in the western portions of iran not the eastern portions of the persian empire and we'll talk about the empire in a second right um um but archaeology and the limited material that we do have from iranian sources um do correct this this um sort of a skewed image that that the that the greeks uh, that part of the greek depiction of of the iranians um has has created right as we will see when we, i mean i will talk to you about this herodotus was very very fond of persians remember that you know um he was talking about noble people with in 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 uh, in both cultural traditions um so it, it, the the greeks were the the greeks and the persians right um had a um sort of um double sided relationship they had a love hate relationship together right with each other yeah I mean um so um, the greek the greeks admired the persians and and the persians of course uh, admired the greeks and and they they had cultural exchanges between the two of them right and and we will see what the 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 writings of of um herodotus for instance as we said right was basically caused by its interactions the the interaction of the greeks with iranians and the greek war greco persian wars right so now let's talk about the topography you know what we we always start with the topography of 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 the regions that we are studying right one of the main things that we need to know right about the topography of iran is that it is above sea levels right you have to um ascend the zagros mountains right in order to go onto the iranian plateau as you can see furthermore my friends right iran which kind of looks like a cat that has been is sitting right um also has control over a large portion of the persian gulf right but what you what you what you notice is that it, it is a very very mountainous region right iran there are two basically two major mountains right the zagros mountains on the western parts right this is the same um region from which enkidu uh, is coming right um and the alborz mountains uh 
and Bulls Mountains, right, to the south of the Caspian Sea in northern Iranian parts. And these al Bulls Mountains are the continuation of uh, the mountains in Turkey and they lead to the Hindukush, Hindukush Mountains, right? Uh, so, so Iran is, is, um, sort of in, em, enveloped, if you will, right, in a series of mountain ranges. You would think that this would make the country impenetrable to foreign, um, foreign enemies and, 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 and migrations and immigrations and whatnot. But in fact, because of the fact that Iran was, a, you know, a, the, the, mo the more important link in Western Asia, connecting East and West, because of that, actually there were a lot of immigrations into the Iranian plateau, right, and, and also at times out of it. Yeah, so uh, so on, on appearances can be deceiving. Now, Iran is actually also very dry, right? It it has a very dry air. In fact, in the middle of Iran, right, are two of the most barren deserts, right, um, of the world, right. Um, and, and, and of course, when you're talking about deserts, right, just like Africa, right, when you're talking about deserts, you're talking about waters underground, right? You're talking about uh, sort of, uh, you're talking basically about seas that have, that have vaporized, right, um, and have created, in the case of Iran, salt deserts. Right, so um, so that that's as far as that is concerned. But of course, you know, it has the Caspian Sea, Iran, right? So and and remember, we talked about rain shadow effects, right? I think we sh we talked about rain shadow effects, right? Rain shadow effects, yeah, and that is when the moisture of the sea comes and hits the mountains, right, and turns into rain and then goes on the rain, yeah, goes on the two sides of the mountains, right, um, and make it, making especially the side of the mountain that is, um, that is looking towards the sea extremely, extremely lush, right. So although Iran is, is this dry country, right, um, it has some of the lushest uh, regions of the world, right? It has two major city, uh, seas, the Caspian Sea and the Persian Gulf that connects it to the uh, uh, Arabian Sea and the Indian Ocean. And then through the Caucasus, right, it's connected to the Black Sea. Now, we will talk about the trade routes and whatnot also again. Um, but this is the general, general sort of um, uh, picture of the Iranian lands. But Iran, <clears throat> okay, here is the topography of Iran, right? And this is um, Persis, the land of the Parsa, right? One of the Iranian tribes. And, and, Persis is the Greek rendition of it. Okay, my friends, right? So I want you to remember um, this area of Persis, right? Uh, I want you to remember this area, right? Um, Hamadan. Or Ek, that's a C, Ekbatana, ancient word for it, E-C, E-C, E-C-B, yeah, Ekbatana, right? 
uh, and uh, yeah, and you see where Tehran is, of course, and in for if you know, if you've heard of uh, of the city of the of the uh, of the clergy of Iran, right, so to speak, the holy city, one of the holy cities of Iran is the Gulf. Um, is 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 called Qum, uh, yeah, Qum, right? Okay, now um, so and you see this is the Caspian Sea, right? And here is the Black Sea, and here is the Caucasus, right? Okay, and and this is what the Caucasus, the region of Caucasus, Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. Right, look like from a satellite uh, view, right? Um, so Iran did not have any Nile or Tigris and Euphrates or Ganges or Yellow River, right? As we will see, it did have one important rab uh, river in in Persis, right? Um, but it did not have many, many. Uh, you know, it did not have these large liver, rivers that sustain, have sustained life, right, in the in um, Tigris and Euphrates, in the Nile, and in India, and in China, right? Um, so the, the, the concentration of the population, right, the concentration of the population in Iran has always been, yeah, on the what they call Piedmont, Piedmont, right? Meaning the base of the mountains, the base of the mountains here, right? Yeah, it was around the base of the mountains because of the rainfalls that came, right? Uh, from the mountains, right? Uh, at the foot of the mountains, literally, foot of the mountains, Piedmont, right? Um, they settled, Iranians settled, right? The concentration being in the west and in the north, right? Of the, of the Iranian plateau, right? Um, so I talked about the uh, the the great salt salt deserts, right? Which together with aridity, um, you know, make Iran uh, make of uh, Iran a very dry zone, hot and dry zone, which is lovely. Uh, you, well, never mind. <laughs> okay, there is this Karun River, nevertheless, right? The Karun River in southwestern Iran, as you can see, it, it also uh, connects to the Persian Gulf. Iranians have had a very, uh, very intimate relationship with the Persian Gulf, right, ever since they came uh, on, the, uh, on the scene, right? They basically came to control um, shipping in the Persian Gulf, and a lot of naval terms that we have, including the term nav, nav right, uh, is Persian, from the Persian world nav, meaning um, ship, right? Um, so a lot of, um, you know, um, these, um, these naval terminologies are actually come from the from the Persians, my friend, to this day, right? And and this is the Karun River with the dam that they had uh, they had uh, construct they have constructed on it in, in in modern times. And these are the jungles of the north of Iran, right? Um, and you know that we you know we talked about the Indo-European uh, uh, sort of. Um, uh, linguistic affiliations, right, my friends? So now you know that your word for jungles, right, is also a cognate, right, cognate of the Persian world jangal, right? And this is uh, how lush the, the 
um, the jungles of the northern parts of Iran are. But in contrast to that, right, you have the deserts of central uh, Iran, right, the deserts of central Iran, and you see also a very, very beautiful landscape as well there. Um, anyway, um, so once the people started moving and settling in these places, right, they needed to get water, waters, not just rainfall waters, but they needed a source of water on which they can re rely. So they came up with this amazing construction, the subterranean channels, right, uh, which would bring the water from the, from the sort of, um, from the foot of the mountain, right, to the land, right, for irrigation. And, and this was a very, very labor intensive work, right? For, for one thing, somehow they figured out where the water, uh, water level lies, right, we, we, after which the water cannot penetrate, right? Um, and, and then they started digging, digging wells, right? And these wells had to always be maintained. And then they started digging at the base of the wells. Another, I don't know, say, you know, whatever, 100 meter or so, another well connecting it, another well connecting it. And, and in a slope, right, where finally the water that is accumulated here, right, um, is brought down, yeah, to a distribution network in order to irrigate the land, right? And these underground channels uh, are called kanats or karis, yeah, my friends. And when they come out, right, and they want to, uh, they, you know, this is how they come out, right? Of course, when the water comes out, right, um, is 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 the purest, the freshest, and so on and so forth. So your elite, right, always settled closer to the car, to the to the water source, and the rest of your population, right, as the water moved down, right, and was spread along, and you have to imagine that the land continues, right, uh, you would have people population settled around uh, around the um, the Ganots, right? So this is an aerial view of the Ganots. It was extremely, extremely time-consuming and labor-intensive to maintain these Ganots, but for, for, for time immemorial, right, this was the only way through which the Iranians would irrigate their lands and, 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 and access fresh water sources, right? Um, the local leaders oversaw the expansion of this, uh, this net, uh, network, right? Um, a central authority organized the number of laborers, right? Um, okay. And, and as we will see, there is a connection, so there is a direct connection in the in the Iranian mindset between royal authority and prosperity of the land and its population, right? And we will get to that when we are talking about the religions of Iran, right? Um, okay, so the Iranians had to sort of depend on a delicate ecological balance, right? Okay, they didn't have much water, right? Uh, unlike the Greeks, right? They were not living in the midst of water, right? But the Iranians had a great deal of um, wealth in terms of resources, especially in terms of mineral resources. Your book maintains that they didn't use the, the, their uh, mineral resources that much, which seems to me a little bit... Uh, 
sort of um, constraint and argument, right? Because why not? You know, everybody around them was using it. Why not the Iranians, right? So the, what did they have for minerals? Yeah, they had copper, they had tin, they had iron, they had gold. I mean, they made iron, they had silver, right? Um, and um, the mountain slopes were more heavily... Uh, wooded and of course from time immemorial the Iranians knew that they had uh, oil and possibly gas in the in in er, around er, surrounding them right because they would see um, fires coming out of the land right um, and um, you know, as a result of the uh, of the burning of the uh, oil and gas underneath it, right? Uh, so they always knew that. Uh, but nineteenth century, the British came and discovered oil for us in Iran. And I would not be. I, I would not. I won't have time to go into that for you. But this is another example of of um, of um, imperialism. Iran was never colonized during the nineteenth century, but the imperialism that affected it, right, meant that the British would have the major portion of benefits through their, uh, you know, uh, British Petroleum, BP and, and whatnot, right? Um, the greatest share of the profits of the oil of Iranians, right, of the Iranian people, basically, right? Um, most of it was, cons was, was sort of under the control and the profits of it went to the British who excavated the oil because they were industrialized. They had, they, were, they had industrialized earlier during the 19th century, right? Um, and, 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 and they remained until 1956 or so when oil was nationalized in Iran. Right, oil was nationalized in Iran, and then um, the U.S. came and took over. Yeah, from the British, the portion of the Iranian oils that the British were taking away. And at any rate, it was it, it is this is how the oil cartels uh, of today uh, were were created, my friends. Right, all these um, and these. Um, sort of gas stations that you go belonging to the British or the US, you know, Exxon and this and that. Their origins, right, my friends, was their control over the, the oil of um, other regions, primarily Western Asia and Iran, right? Um, okay. Um, all right, and he, he, this is how the the these minerals are are distributed, right? They are distributed all over Iran, right? And you know you can you can um, sort of pause here and 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 look at where copper is, where zinc is, chrome is, iron is, you know, and so on and so forth in 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 Iran, right? Okay. So remember, we, we said that the Pars, Par, um, the Parsa came and settled in Southwest, but remember we have been talking about the Medes. The Medes came, right, and for, um, for more than a century, right, they, they ruled uh, and they, they defeated, the, uh, defeated the Assyrians, as, as you remember, right, defeated the Assyrians, took over their lands, Right and went as far as remember what we are, we told you as Lydia between Lydia, right and the um, between uh, 
Lydia and me, the Medes became neighbors, right? During the period of the growth of the of 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 the Medes, right? There were the Medes in the east, then there were the Lydians in southwest of I mean west of Anatolia, and then after that was the Ionians, right? Ionians, right? So the Lydians were were basically the uh, the middleman between the Ionians and the Medes, right? Uh, okay, um, so uh, they played a major part in the destruction of Assyrian Empire in the 7th century, and they extended their, their control west, right, over Assyrian domains. So remember, this is how our, our, our world looked like circa, say, 600, right? Media, Assyria, Babylonia, remember? And then finally, um, you know, again, here is the Medes, here is, are the Persians. I want you to keep in mind Susa, the, the circular city, right? And Persepolis, and we'll get to it. And this is the Indus River, of course, right? So, excuse me, the, the Medes destroyed the Assyrian Empire, right? And took over control, right, of this part of the world, right? Babylonia is still not under their control. Babylon, right? But you see that they have gone into, um, into the, um, into the uh, Caucasus, right? And they have moved east, uh, as you can see, and they have penetrated into Anatolia, right? Okay. So then, here is the, the uh, relief of two meads, right? Bearing gifts, uh, they're depicted on the ceremonial capital of the Achaemenes, to whom we will get to right now, right? Okay. Um, so these Iranians uh, spread across Western and Central Asia, right? In Iran and in Central Asia, right? Um, okay. Okay. Then there, in the in the sixth uh, century, right, the the Persians, right, the Persians, who are now under Median control here, right, they begin to expand. The Persians begin to expand, right, and they begin to build the Persian Empire. I just want to tell you a little bit about the the kings, right, the important kings that we, we, we should keep in mind. Well, it was the, um, the Achaemenid Empire, right, began by Cyrus the First, right, Cyrus the First, then we had Cambyses, then we had Cyrus the Great, Cyrus the Second, Cyrus the Great, right, um, then we have important ones, right? Then we have Darius the first, right? Um, then we have Xerxes the first, right? Then we have, you know, Xerxes the second, da, da, da. and then we have Darius the second, and then we have a number of Artaxerxes, Artaxerxes and finally the last, um, so, uh, Achaemenid king, right? Um, the last Achaemenid king, Darius or Darius the third, right? So, um, okay. So the the rise of the Achaemenids basically, right, begins in the eighth century, uh, continues through the seventh century, right, and the red. Real beginnings is Cyrus the first, middle of the seventh century BCE, right, my friends. By by the middle of the uh, I'm sorry, middle of the seventh century. By the middle of the sixth century BCE, this is the empire of the Persians, right? Now, remember, up to now, uh, I mean, four eighty is from 800 
to 480 is the archaic period. Remember during the archaic period the settlements take place here, right? The colonization takes place here during the archaic period, right? Um, the Greeks go all over the place here, including Ionia, right? This is this is i.e. when the Persians come and go and control Thrace, parts of Macedonia, right, and 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 get all these islands and take over I uh, Ionia and of course Egypt, right, and they even take over Babylonia and they move east, right, to India. They take over the Indus River civilization, right, um, and 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 and. and you know, they're pushing further and further east. Yeah, this is the RLC. They're even going further into the east, in, into what is now um, Afghanistan and, and you see here Kabul and Harat, right, um, are Afghanistan and, 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 and um, here Tajikistan and Uzbekistan. It is all these Istans. Istan means actually the land of in Persian, yeah? Land, Tajikistan, the land of the Tajiks. Afghanistan, the land of the Afghans. Uzbekistan, the land of the Uzbeks, who are Tur Turkic, right? Um, and so on and so forth. So... This is the first time, for the first time in our history, my friends, right? Most of Western Asia, right, um, comes under the Iranian control, including Egypt, right? So imagine, when, when this is the case, right? When this is the case means there are no boundaries, right? There are no frontiers, Right? If you want to trade, you can trade. If you are in trace, you can trade with Gandahara. If you, you know, um, if you are in Palestine, you can trade with Susa and the Indus Valley civilization. Right? If you are in east, 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 Eastern Mediterranean, you have always been able to do that. Right? To trade. Right? But now the the the, the you are trading under one law, under the law of the Achaemenid Empire. In fact, one of the most important contributions of the Achaemenids to the rest of the world, and the Greeks, and well, of course, then the Romans come and they systematize the whole thing, was in fact their law, right? The imposition of laws for various communities. They made various communities, systematize their law, you know, write it down, and abide by that law so they would know, you know, with with whom they are dealing, under what cultural context, context right, what languages, what, what are their laws, and so on and so forth, right? So this is the greatest extent of the Achaemenid Empire, you see, huh? Um, that Darius the Great and Xerxes is right. They have moved even further east, right, into into um, into Asia, right. I want you also so we know now Media, you know we know Persia, right, Persis. We know Elam. We of course know Ekbatana, right. And I want you to keep in mind. Just remember the names Hyrcania, but most importantly, remember the Parthians. We will talk about the Parthians, right? So, okay, well, for now, the first major empire of the Iranians is the Achaemenid Empire, right? And this is the extent of its um, sort of um, expanse during the um, Darius the Great and uh, Xerxes' name, right? So, um, the, uh, and, 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 you know, and, and they, they had created this huge empire and together with it, a ceremonial capital that, that, that uh, you know, uh, to which peoples of various kind, various parts of the world would come on uh, occasions of Iranian news, uh, new, 
New Year uh, and and celebrations, they would come and they would bring gifts, right, um, to the king of the kings. of Iran sorry Iran yeah in fact this monarchical Iran up until 1979 right had a monarchical system right had monarchies basically yeah 1979 had, and as such it is the oldest, it was the oldest monarchy of the world, besides the British. Monarchy of the world, besides the British. So they, the, the kings, yeah, the Iranians developed an elaborate, elaborate system of kingship, right, using partly the Mesopotamian elements, right, and partly the Indo-Iranian elements that they have um, bring into Iran through their own rich cultural traditions, which we will get to later on, right? So this Achaemenids rule from 530 to 330, and they are destroyed by Alexander, the Iranians, the ancient Iranians know, knew him as the accursed. Of course, we know him as the great, right? One of the things that the Alexander did was to put to fire Persepolis, right? In in revenge, they are, we are told, of the um, Achaemenids' burnings of Athens and 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 you know other uh, the Achaemenids um, becoming the perpetrator, perpetrate, perpetrate, perpetrate. Excuse me, hold on a moment. <laughs> My friends, one second. Okay, so this is perpetrate. Yes, perpetrate. Yes, my friends, perpetrate. As opposed to the Iranians perpetrating the crime, the, and this time was the Alexander, Alexander who came and, yeah, uh, avenged, we, we are told, yeah. Um, so they called themselves Achaemenes because they traced their genealogy to a person called um, Achaemenes, right? Yeah, um, okay. So, and, and, and because they had such elaborate conceptions of kingship, right, and be, be, because they had this regal, right, uh, and, and regal understanding of royalty, right, uh, look at the way the Iranian kings, right, especially Darius and Xerxes, for instance, they have been entombed, right? In the in 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 the middle of the of the um, of the mountains, right? Rocks in the middle of the rocks, right? In in uh, in these uh, chambers, right? Uh, around which you have writings and uh, and other symbolic depictions, and and here. Here are your uh, earthlings. Where are we? Yeah, um, your earthlings compared to this mon uh, monumental structures, right? So they they came to the Persian Gulf, right? And um, okay, so the Achaemenes began to grow and began to expand their territories, right? Um, by Cyrus the Great, by 550, right, they had overthrown the Medians, right, they, they have overthrown the Medians, right, and, and, and what was smart about them was that they, they made the Medians participate with them 
in their in their um in their rule right uh, the difference between them was not that great right so like most of the world that we have been uh, discussing so far we are dealing with a patriarchal society right uh, which has three classes well four classes if you will there is the royalty and the nobility who are partly also warriors right and then there are your priests and then there is the general population right um the royalty and nobility who are also from the warrior caste um, control, control the abode, right? You are dealing with a land-owning aristocracy, right? Um, they to take pleasure amongst their pleasure, hunting, fighting, and gardening, right? Um, and they had a group of priests called the Magi, right? The Magi or the Magush, right? who were ritual specialists, right, for the Iranian religions, which is which is a totally new ball game, right? We will get to it. And um, then the Semitic uh, sort of traditions that uh, we have come across but we have not discussed, such as the Judaic tradition, such as the um, African tradition of the Egyptians, um, such as the... As we will see, uh, it has a great influence on Christianity, but that is for another um, another um, uh, sort of installment, my friends. But now you remember, you have the three Magi, right, who come and witness the birth of Christ, right, who are following the stars. Right, and they come and they witness the birth of the Christ. Now you know, my friends, who were the Magi, right? These important, important figures, right, in our sort of uh, collective consciousness, right, of the birth of Christ, right? Who is witnessing it but the Persian Magi? And why is that the case? We'll talk about it late, later. But now you know that the Magi are Iranian priests. Right? And here is a depiction of the three magi coming from the east with their eastern uh, sort of um, uh, dresses and couture, right? and witnessing the birth of Christ. Right? Now Cyrus the Great redrew the map of Western Asia. Right? Uh, he conquered Lydia in Western Anatolia. Right? All the Greek city-states right, of Ionia came under the con un control of the Iranians um, in, in, under Cyrus the Great, right, by 546 um, BCE or so, yeah. Um, so here we are, we are still in the archaic period of, of the Greeks, right, and the Persians are expanding, right, and they take over all of um, Anatolia, and this is the uh, 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 rendition of Cyrus the Great, who dies in 530 BCE, right? He identifies himself as king of Persia, king of Anshan, which is to the south of Media. King of Anshan, king of Media, king of Babylon, uh, king of Sumer and Akkad, and the king of the four corners of the world. Right? Four corners of the world. Everything under the sun is under their control, right? As they would like to us to believe. And it was basically the case, right? So Cyrus comes, right? He, come, he takes over Babylon, he takes over Anatolia, he, he takes over the Fertile Crescent, right? Uh, and all these different cultures come, he, he comes to Babylonia, and he sees that their god is Marduk, right? Uh, and he goes to, and, and he sees that there is a, there is a population there, right, uh, of the Jews in exile, besides other, other populations of Mesopotamia, right? So he, set, he creates these cylinder seals, right, that he sends to, uh, to the various regions that uh, they have under control, right? And in it, 
right? We suppose that through it we have the first sort of declaration of human rights, right? Because in it, Cyrus says, okay, build up your laws, codify your laws, codify your religions, live by them. I don't want you to live, you know, to become a Persian or Iranianized or whatnot, right? I don't want you to learn the Persian language like the Hittite had done, right? And no, 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 yeah? Um, you live by your own customs and traditions. So we, we think of Cyrus and his cylinder seal, a copy of which is, is in the UN now, right? As the first declaration of human rights, right? That, uh, that it doesn't matter where you're coming from, right? You have your laws, right? Um, and, and nobody's going to impose, uh, impose their laws and customs on you. Right, so you have your rights, right? So and 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 finally he dies in five thirty three, and they create a simple tomb for him, right? The tomb of Cyrus the the Great, right? Um, he they when he was going into Babylonia, basically the they opened the gates of the city to him, right? And uh, Cyrus showed respect to the priesthood, and had his son um, crowned king in accordance with the native traditions, right? This is before Cyrus taking over, right? This is the Lydian Empire, these are the Ionians, this is Chaldeans um, uh, in Mesopotamia, right? Uh, these are the Medes, right? This is the Persis, and these are the Egyptians. But of course, this is what happens right under Cyrus the Great. You notice Egypt is not yet under the control of the Persians, right? Okay, so this is the extent mm, of, of um, Cyrus's realm. Then comes Cyrus's son, Cambyses, right? And it is Cambyses who has set his sight on Egypt, right? Um, and and it is, you know, the Persians go to Egypt, there are a series of bloody battle, battles, and they are uh, victorious, right? They even send expeditions um, west to Libya and south to Nubia, right? Um, the Greek sources depict him, of course, as a cruel and <laughs> impious madman, but since this is a, these are the Greek sources, we obviously take that take it with a with a major grain of salt right um so um so again in egypt right they cultivate local priests and nobles respect native traditions right when cambyses dies in 5 to uh, 22 and darius right comes to the throne right um Darius comes to the throne, and the Medes play a wrestle role in the Achaemenid Empire, right? And here is Cambyses II of Persia um, capturing the pharaoh, pharaoh um, Samtik III, right? And it, all of this is depicted on a Persian seal of the 6th century BCE, right? Um, okay, and, um, and here is uh, Cambyses, king of kings of Persia, and pharaohs of Egypt, right? Okay, so then we come to Darius, right? Darius is the one who goes further east, right? Takes over the Indus Valley, right? And goes further west. It goes into Tra Thrace, right? Now, listen to this. We are getting closer closer to the classical age of Greeks, which starts at 480, remember? 480, right? So all of this, right, all of these expansions, of course, right, has already engulfed Iranians with the Greeks, right? To the Greeks, the Persians were the ultimate power 
that confronting them, right? There were the Greeks and the Persians, right? Two different setups, completely different setups uh, in terms of warfare, right? In terms of um, logistics of warfare, in terms of strategies of warfare, uh, populations who fought for them, right? Um, and, and so on and forth, so forth. And um, it is after these wars that we will get into again a little bit more, right? It is after these wars that the classical age of the Greeks begin. You guys, I'm so sorry. My husband walked in and, yeah, you know, uh, startled me. And, um, okay. To tell me I should stop probably this this video, yeah, and this portion of the video, yeah, my friends, but uh, I will right in a, in a second in in a in a while. Um, I just want to tell you that um, by five hundred, right, the the Persians are already in 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 Thrace, right, um, and this is a relief of. Darius the first in Persepolis, Persepolis, and this is Thrace, right? Thra Thracia, right? Persian Empire, all the Ionians in 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 war with the Greeks, right? And they took over um, Thracia in the midst of this war with the Greeks, right? The Greeks, meanwhile, have formed the Delian, um, sort of. Uh, collaboration, the Delian League, remember, right, in order to um, to confront, right, the Persians, right, okay, and and then we get to the Achaemenid, uh, the the Persian Greek Wars, and we I will continue um, this uh, session, my friends, in in um, in other. Uh, videos. For now, I bid you farewell, my friends. And sorry, I'm really, really sorry for shouting out like that. <laughs> okay, now is uh, see you soon. <laughs> Talk to you soon.